I'm worried simply because if you look at the definition of what constitutes a failed state, we tick most of the boxes right now. The number one qualification of a failed state is its inability to provide security for its citizens. That's the number one qualification. We have that. The number two qualification for being a failed state is a capacity gap in a government's ability, in a state's ability to provide social services. Our people have to wait days in hospitals. We can't even get vaccines because we cut the vaccine budget, according to the good health minister. So we tick the second box too for a failed state, my fellow leaders. The next one is the legitimacy of the state. Our people are already questioning all of our state institutions because they have lost trust. They are struggling to accept the legitimacy of elections. And I know we are dealing with it, and I know we are going to talk about it, but we tick that box too, my dear leaders. We tick already three of the most important boxes for a failed state. We tick it. What's the fourth one? Poor governance and corruption. Do we tick that box or not? <clears throat> Prolonged economic crisis is the fifth box of a failed state. Do we tick that box? Extreme inequality is another box. I could go on, but let me stop him, Lohab. It is time for us to get a serious security briefing on this floor. It is time for us to take emergency measures. I made a comment to the good Prime Minister and his deputy two days after the events in Port Mosby and I said to them, my dear brothers, my dear leaders, if I could, I would give you both medals for firefighting. You are the two top firefighters in Papua New Guinea. I said that to them. We cannot continue to fight fires. We need to be strategic. We need to start to build the interdiction capability of our security forces. The threat is not outside, the threat is inside. Last month, Port Mosby, a couple of months back, it was West New Britain. Upper State Asol and Wabana Amanda. And I want some assurances from this house that we can say confidently, next month and the month following and the month after that, by this the same heavy, you know, come up, no, not flat, no, this country. I want us to give our people that assurance. If we cannot, then we should seriously search our conscience. Me, Save, you, Mr. Khan, a cross fight, talk, talk, law here, but I think we all want the same things. We all want what's best for our people. We all want our people to live in peace and harmony and to raise our children in relative safety and security and to have an opportunity to raise our children and them, their children. I think that's what every Papua New Guinean wants. And this house, this state, the independent state of Papua New Guinea must give them that. Otherwise companies are going to pack up and leave and our problems will worsen. Our smart citizens are going to start looking for opportunities elsewhere because they are worried about the safety and the security of their children into the future.